The following is a comfortably zoned radio network production. Hello and welcome to Yankees Baseball on the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. I'm Wayne Unger and I'm here with my old friend Jack DeGraw and two Yankee fans loving and talking Yankee baseball. How are you doing, Jack? Good. How are you today, Wayne? Um, I'm doing good. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited. We're getting a little closer to the season and, uh, you know... Uh, what, what what more could a baseball fan want is to have a baseball season. So, so you you know you're you're out in Tampa. You see uh you see a lot more than I do. A- anything uh has anything? Po- I'll, I'll, all right, so let's start with the good news first. Anything positive stuck out at you in in the past week? Well, the good the good thing, Wayne, is just be, being in the ballpark. That's that's the best thing. And you know, there, of course, there's not as many fans, and it's you know you can get close to the players and see a lot of stuff. The thing that's really impressed me is like just seeing the way Stanton is hitting the ball. I mean, he hit a bomb last night, and he had a couple doubles on Sunday, and he really, uh, you know, he really looks good. Not that spring training means anything, but it looks like. Uh, you know, he's off to a good start. Well, you know, and, and I, I said this last year. It was a shame he was hurt. But last year he came up with that. He came in with that new stance, that upright stance. I, and, I, and I said I like this. It's much more direct to the ball. There's a lot less loop in the swing. And uh, unfortunately he wasn't healthy enough for us to see the fruits of it. Uh, although we certainly got a, a nice preview of what could be in, in the playoffs. I mean, let's face it, with, without Stanton, Yankees might probably wouldn't have gotten out of the first round. Uh, you know, he, he carried them on his back. Yeah, he really – I think he had five playoff home runs, and I, I think, you know, people forget because they, they get down on the injuries and stuff, but when he's healthy – you know, he, he's an outstanding ball player. He's a great player. He is. He is. Uh, I Personally, I, I think it's a shame that the Yankees are so worried about him getting hurt that he's going to be relegated to mostly DH unless, unless something uh, necess- necessitates him, uh, you know, moving to the outfield because – he was a decent outfielder, and he had a, a, a an above average arm. But I, you know, I guess they're going to do what they have to do to protect him. Uh, people also forget his first season here. He he still hit 38 home runs, and he played hurt that year. People people a lot of people don't realize that he played hurt that year, but he kept playing because Hicks was hurt, Judge was out a good part of the year, and he just hung in there and played. He still hit 38 home runs. You know, like, not too shabby for playing hurt. So, uh, and, I mean, it's, uh, I I guess, I guess it was the expectations that everybody had when he came. And uh, so, you know, but he's been, actually, when you think about it, I, I wonder, the fact that Judge has been hurt, actually, for the past, you know, three seasons and he's had one full season. I wonder I wonder what the actual uh difference is between the amount of games they played. I mean and this is not a knock knock on Aaron Judge either. It's you know, he's not a you know, he's not a he's not a malinger or anything, but like but he gets a pass. Judge gets Judge gets a pass and Stanton doesn't. So Yeah, it always it almost sounds like, you know, the Jeter A Rod thing. <laughs> You know, it, with Stanton and, and Judge, I, I think you bring up a good point. Like Stanton played in the National League, and he was used to playing to, in the outfield. And I just wonder if you know a lot of guys might have trouble dealing with you know just sitting there and then batting. You know, they they maybe can't get into a flow of the game, and maybe you know Stanton might be one of those players. Uh, you know, I, 
I, you can't really say that because we don't know. I mean, so, I mean, listen, it's not like he was terrible. So uh, he did play the outfield in, in 2018. He played the outfield uh, a lot. I mean, if I remember correctly, he, I think he played like 100 and, you know, uh, 150 games in the out. What was it, 2018? Uh, he played, all right. No, he played half the season in the outfield, I think. Okay. okay. And and he DH. But, uh, you know, but then in 2019, you know, he in the last two years, he's only had about, I don't know, 120 hundred and thirty plate uh plate appearances, maybe a little more or at bats, you know, but like but I mean I like I say, I, w- I wonder how, how many more judge had. I'm actually I'm actually gonna look it up. I'm I'm curious to see like who's actually played more in the last three years. And uh let's see. So Judge has about nine hundred plate appearances. In the last three years, okay, and and Stanton has very close. Stanton has about eight hundred and seventy. Okay, but you know where does the focus go? You know, but it's uh, you know he's the outsider, and it's the same thing with A Rod. A Rod, A Rod was the outsider, uh, so. You know, there you have it. So, well, well you know, another, I, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, Wayne. No, I was going to say, but e- either way, you know, like, listen, just looking forward to, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, a healthy year from both of them because those two guys lengthen the lineup, okay? They, they will, you know, they will, uh, everybody else will have a better year if those two guys are healthy. Oh, oh yeah. And, and I think another thing with, with Judge, I mean, he's coming up to a big contract time. And, you know, they got Stanton locked in for X amount of years and Hicks. And, you know, you, you want to see what you have in Judge. Are you going to give X amount of dollars to somebody, to you know, for the next five or six years, you know, when you really don't know, uh, you know, if he can stay healthy? Because he's not just a lumbering player. He, He's very athletic, and I think, you know, that in some ways that's why he gets hurt too because he's always diving around and things like that. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, he's got some – I think he's pretty smooth. I don't, I don't look at him as, uh, uh, you know, I don't look at him as a, a reckless defensive player or base runner. Uh, I, I personally think he's kind of smooth out there. I, I wonder if his injury problems uh, are, are more are related to training, and uh, and you know I mean look you saw how uh, they both they both look leaner particularly Stanton, and uh, so they you know they're doing yoga and they're, they're doing other things. I mean they these guys they're so big they're so strong. It's like. They they don't they didn't need to bulk up. They needed the uh you know they wanted to keep, of course they wanted to do some type of strength training but you know what's important uh, is to uh, to stay loose. I mean think about it like the tall the tall lean strong guys like uh, oh like a Daryl Strawberry he you know he used to hit monstrous shots he was a threat he was a power hitter and 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 so like you see uh stanton's body this year is a little more along the lines of what you would you know we used to see in in a daryl strawberry type player there's probably others that just you know it's just floating floating you know out there it's just uh it's on the tip of my tongue so uh hopefully you know hopefully the uh, change in training uh, will will help them. We'll, you know, all they need to do is stay healthy. And Aaron Hicks is another guy that you know needs to stay healthy. I personally, uh, I cringed when they gave him a seven year contract. Uh, you know, so I, I, you know, I mean, all right, it wasn't, it wasn't, 
Ellsbury 2.0, but nonetheless, I'm like, why why are you signing a injury prone guy to a long term contract? I, I don't get it. So. No, I, I never could figure that out too. And and you know, look look at a guy like Luke Luke Voigt. Look how he ch- how he's changed his body. I mean, he looks fantastic. Yes, and I mean, he's still he's still big. He was big, but he he def- you could see he's a little more streamlined. But he's got plenty of power, and y- you can see also in the way he swung the bat that besides the power, he right before our eyes, he became a better hitter. He definitely became a, a much better hitter. So, uh, I mean, offensively, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really worried about the Yankees offensively. Uh, to me, I still think their uh, starting pitching is just like last year. After, uh, after uh, Cole... It's still it's still a question mark, uh, <clears throat> you know. Like the hope for the best, uh, Jam- uh, Domingo German. Uh, how do they pronounce it, German or Herman? Is it Herman? Herman. Domingo? Domingo? Herman. Herman. Okay. So uh, you know he's he's looked really good, and, and I'm happy for that because I tell you what, the year he won 18 games for the Yankees. What a lot of people don't realize is they scored almost seven runs a game for him. So he he was he pitched he pitched good, but he didn't pitch as good as what did he have like an eighteen and five record or something? Yeah, he didn't. Eighteen and four you know, somewhere. Yeah, I mean if you if you looked at it though, he was the beneficiary of of a lot of offense. Uh, you know, and it could be the luck of the draw. It really can be the luck of the draw. I was having a discussion about with somebody, or I should say we were debating about uh, Noah Syndergaard and, and Jake DeGrom, and, and uh, somebody brought up, I forgot what year it was. Oh, I think he was, uh, Syndergaard was more valuable because she won 15 games that year and DeGrom only won 10. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And, like, you know, right away it was like, you know, one, Syndergaard gave up more runs, and uh, and two, the the Mets actually it was just luck of the draw. It's not like they hit, they say, oh, this guy's pitching, we're going to hit better. It was just a luck of the draw. But like he he had almost a run a game better as well when he pitched. So, but again, after Cole, it's like, uh, you know, uh, I mean, Kluber looked great in his in his two innings, but it was two innings. So, yeah, well, that's a concern, Wayne, because, you know, he hasn't pitched in a couple of years. And, you know, even the guy they got from the, the Pirates, uh, you yeah. know, he hasn't pitched in a couple of years. How young? Yeah. And, and another thing, I mean, even the guys who played, quote, last season, it was like 35% season. How many innings are they going to be able to throw this year? You know, that. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, because you have that that concern. Uh, oh, what what is that? Uh, it's Tom Verducci has that thing, and he actually got it from uh, oh the pitching coach of the Mets, Rick. Uh, I forget his name, uh, but he was the pitching coach of the Mets and the A's when during the uh, Moneyball. Uh, Rick Peterson. So yeah. basically. Uh, I think it's like if a, if a it's really more for young pitches, but if uh, they, there's like a number and I forgot if it's thirty innings more or forty innings more uh, yeah, than the year before. Yeah, that, it's something like thirty to forty to fifty innings somewhere along there. Yeah, and and they consider and they consider that a red flag, and uh, and I'll give you a, I'll give you a perfect example, Luis Severino. Yeah. So yep. the last the last full season he had, including the playoffs, including the postseason, he went like fifty seven innings more than the year before. And I was watching that. And he was you know, he had the velocity but he didn't have the command. And uh you know, it was like it was like a loss of two seasons. And so 
you know, that he was a prime example, and there's, there's many, many more. Well, even the year Herman won 18 games, he, he like, started to wear out a little bit in the second half. He wasn't as good as in the second half as he was in the first. Yeah. I mean, uh, so, yeah, it's true. You wonder, you know, I wonder what, what we're going to see from the starters and, uh, and, and how they're going to shuffle that. I actually see now based on the 2019 postseason uh, when the Nationals won, we start, I, I, you know, I, 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 I find that uh, uh, baseball in the regular season will copy a successful trend from the previous postseason. I remember back in, after the 2016 postseason, uh, I had, you know, when I was doing my podcast regularly, I remember asking Jerry Krasnick, he was with ESPN back then, Barry Bloom, uh, I think Barry Bloom was with MLB.com back, back then, uh, guys like that, if they, if they thought that they were going to see relievers used in the regular season like they were used in the, in the, in the postseason, they said, no, nah, and it'll burn out and this and that, and guess what? Reliever usage just increased and increased and increased. So I thought after guys like uh, Strasburg and, and, you know, and, and uh, others went deep into the, you know, Cole and guy, Granky, they were all going deep in the postseason. I'm thinking, wow, I wonder if that will elicit some type of change. And maybe we'll start seeing starters going a little longer. But, of course, you know, uh, we never got, you know, that never materialized because of, uh, you know, COVID. So, and, and obviously it's definitely not going to happen this year. It's not no. going to happen this year. Uh, unless of course, maybe by the time we hit postseason, maybe by then the starters will be stretched out and maybe they'll go a little longer, but that's what, that's what I think it'll take for uh, teams to change the way that they use starters. I think if we see a, a postseason where starters go deeper into games and successfully deeper into games, I, I think we might see it the following year in, in baseball. Well, you, you know, Wayne, you, you know, you got guys like with the Yankees, you know, you got Schmidt and a couple of these young picture, pitchers. You know, I might not even let those guys pitch till June or July, you know, like, because – like we, we we're talking about now, I mean, how many innings can glo uh, uh, Gloober throw? You want to start the inning, you know, a season with a guy like that, and by the time you get to July or August, he, you know, he might have thrown ninety or hundred innings. How many more innings are you going to get it, get out of him? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm wondering how they're going to make the adjustments. I wonder if we're going to see six man staffs. Uh, I'm I'm really I'm not sure. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, as it is now. So, I mean, let's see. So, the Yankees rotation now is looking like Cole, uh, Kluber, uh, Montgomery. Uh, let's just say, for argument's sake, Garcia, uh, Her Herman. Uh, so, they, you know, they need to, they need to find, uh, you know, um, who did I, oh, Tyon. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, may, maybe. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, I guess we're going to find out in another two and a half weeks as, as they round into form. Uh, I'm curious to see how, you know, how deep the starters go after, like, let's say, two more starts, like, um, you know, like the last – the last week of spring training. I'm curious to see how deep we'll see the starters go. You, you know, I always wondered why spring training was so long, you know, for the pitchers. And I think of what we've seen last year, you know, when they had a, you know, they had a shutdown and halfway through spring training, and then they tried to come back in three weeks. Uh, you know, the pitching was, was, wasn't too good last summer. Not that it should be expected to be getting good, but, uh, 
I think, you know, pitchers need a long time to round into shape. Yeah, no, and they 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 need they need to cut you uh, to come into uh, come into shape slowly. They need to slowly stretch their arm out. Particularly, we're talking about guys that like have been pitching since they're kids and throwing hard. I mean, listen, I noticed like even playing softball. Okay, in my in my mid late thirties, like. When I started, you know, to, you know, you know how you throw before the game. Yeah, I would yep. be like, I'd be like forty feet from somebody. I'd start there, and, you know, like, and I, and then like, so you know, you throw, you take a step back, you throw, you take a step back, you throw, you, and 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 just slowly ease into it. I mean, uh, think about like, the, with, you know, guys that have like the wear and tear that they have on their arms and. Uh, you know, you got. I mean, even if you're in shape and this is what you do, and and you and you condition your body for it, you 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 know, it's you you definitely feeling it after you pitch. So. Well, I I I think the thing is now, Wayne, with the, the philosophy of pitching. I mean, even in high school, I mean, if, if they won't let kids, you know, throw forty forty or fifty innings, and they they don't bat. I mean, I knew a guy. He he's with the Cardinals now, and he used to work with you know high school and college guys and they would be babying these guys along you know you're you're, yeah. you're you you go out there and throw as hard as you can for as long as you can and then they you have a pitch count and that's it yeah I, you know and it's funny you mention it yeah that they don't hit i'm i'm surprised i don't get it if there's not going to be a dh in the national league I want to know when are they going to start to let if the national league is the home team in a spring training game I want to know when when is the when are the pitches going to hit. I personally think that we're going to see a, a universal DH this year. I have a feeling that this is that they just negotiate and they're going back and forth. Basically, the players the players want it, but yeah. Major League Baseball wants it just as much, if not more. And the players know that, so the players are like, you know, it's 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 a negotiating play for them. They they want to get something for it, so uh, you know, I, I I like I say, wouldn't shock me if a week before the season some kind of an ag- of agreement was made. Wouldn't shock me at all. I'm I'm almost kind of expecting it. So yeah, well, yeah. I, I li- personally, I've always liked the DH. I mean, I can understand the argument, you know, the purists in the National League, but I mean, to watch a pitcher hit. It's just, you know, it it t- it takes something away from the game for me. It's like it's an automatic out almost. Well, and me, I like the, I I tell you what, I like the pitcher hit, hitting, and I and I'll tell you why. One one of the great things about baseball is the unexpected. Okay, it's you know, and let alone let alone the pitcher hitting, it's you know. Uh, back in the day, like, they, they, you know, they didn't care if a shortstop hit 220 as long as he was, like, a great fielder. So, I mean, there was nothing better, you know, than seeing that 220 hitter, you know, particularly against a really good pitcher, you know, surprise everybody and, and you know, and, 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 get, and, get, and get the game-winning hit or, you know, take him deep and things like that. Uh, and, and I think you know, having pitches bat. And uh, I think people, you know what it is too, I think because even the National League pitches bat less and less, I think uh, people forget, like, it wasn't really that bad. A part of it is also there's no there's no bunting and, and, and base running, really. So no. a lot of that is taken out of the game. It's uh, There's just so much, you know, it's, a lot has to do with the way the game itself has evolved the strategy. So, uh, I yeah, I kind of like it, but at this point, uh, I'm kind of, like, resigned to the fact, like, we might as well because uh, pitches, e- even in the, in the minor leagues, like, I think the rule was in, uh, I forgot what levels, 
Uh, I think in I think like uh, single A, double A, and triple A. Uh, don't quote me on this, but in the National League park, the the pitches would hit. But if the National League team that w- was the home team, if they if they agreed, they can use a DH. So guys coming up in the minor leagues were not hitting. Pitches were not hitting. So all of a sudden they have to like rediscover the skill. So that that's not you know that too wasn't good. So. And no, when you're when you're trying to learn a skill against a guy, you know the the, the best pitchers in the world, it, it you're, it's not going to happen. I mean, especially uh, when you have to do it every so often. I mean, you know, I'm sure the guys who could pitch. I mean, years ago, I mean, they were great hitters in high school and they could hit in college. And then you get to the you know the top level. It's a whole different it's a whole different game. You know, people forget who they're hitting against. <laughs> That's why they're hitting 120 or something. Yeah, I mean, generally when I you know when I remember playing ball when I was younger, generally the guy that that pitched, he was he was usually the best or one of the best players on the team, and and when he wasn't pitching, he was usually a shortstop. He yeah, was usually yeah. the best, you know, the, your best pitcher was usually your best athlete overall. And uh, so a lot, you know, a lot of these guys, so, you know, but again, you know, they, they want you to do one or the other. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I get it. I get it. Listen, we're, I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to, at the last minute, we're going to see that universal DH. So, and uh, so, so Tom, so what what are your thoughts? It's still early, okay. But if somebody held a gun to your head and said, "Hey Jack, make some make some predictions," okay, uh, you you got any ideas? Uh, just just uh, division winners. Well, of course I'm prejudiced, Wayne. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pick the Yankees because. You know, I, I've been picking the Yankees to win win the World Series since 1964, so that that never changes. <laughs> but you know, but I, I'll tell you, as a baseball fan, I have such respect for the Tampa Rays, what they're able to do. I I think it's amazing what what they're able to do year after year. I I agree, I agree. But you see, I mean, listen, I I pick the Yankees to win their division this year. I do. I still think they're going to, you know, the, but what I've always said is you can slug your way to first place, but yep. most teams do not slug their way to the World Series championship. I mean, there have been some, but for the most part, the, the you know, the, the slugging teams that, that are deficient in other areas, that they can make it to the postseason – but once they get there, they they generally they don't win at all. There's very well, few that have. I'll tell you, Wayne. You know, I, I love the Yankees. I love doing the show and talking about it. But it, but it's been the same thing for almost 20 years. For me, the season doesn't start till October, and it's so frustrating. You know, they're going to win 95, 100 games, and then you get to October, and what won for you in the regular season doesn't win in the playoffs. You know, then they strike out all the time and they're facing better pitching and, and things like that. And and that's what's really frustrating as a Yankee fan. We know they're going to be good. They're good every year. But they get in the playoffs and then they have games they strike out 18 times. Yeah. I mean, that's for any slugging team. It's the truth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and although I, see, I, even though I'm a Yankee fan, uh I, if I don't think they're going to win, I don't. I don't say yeah. I, I pick the Yankees. I mean, uh, I actually picked Houston two years in a row. I picked them the year they won it and the year before that when they didn't. Uh, but you know, I mean, I, 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 you know, the I'll pick the Yankees. Uh, you know, I, I and I, t- I tell you what, I, I think. Uh, I think Chicago has done enough and is, you know, has enough pitching to to win the Central. But uh, I would, you know, I wouldn't count out Cleveland or Minnesota. But I particularly would not count out Cleveland so fast. 
Uh, I still I still think they're in play. Uh, in the West, uh, I I tell you, uh, I pro you know, if I'm the, I, you know, the the West is a tough one. The West is a tough one. Uh, it really is. I, I don't you know. I and I I say you know. Uh, I think Otani is going to be a huge difference maker. If he's healthy and Trout is healthy all year and uh, they can, you know, just get a little bit of pitching behind Otani, uh, I, I, I think they can pull it off. I think, you know, I don't look at that. I don't look at any team in that division as being a, uh, a runaway leader. But, I mean, of course, I think it's probably between Oakland and Anaheim and uh, uh, what you call it. In Houston, and what? So, all right. What about what about the National League East? What do you think of them? What do you think? What do you think about that? Well, I, I'd love, you know, I'd love to see the Mets step up. I, I, I really would. I think it'd be just great for the city. And they've made some, you know, great moves this off season. You know, the new ownership has really stepped up and got some, uh, you know, big time players. So they they want to win now. Yeah, and I and I tell you what, I really I liked what they did in the off season because they they made some they made some smart moves. They didn't they they didn't let themselves be seduced by oh let's get real Muto let's get Springer. Although I think I th- see I think Springer would have been a great addition for them, but I, I I totally understand them saying no five years and that's it. And I get it, and it's fine. Uh, I like, you know, so to me, like the Lindor trade, just, just as good as, as getting a guy like Springer uh, and getting Carrasco in that trade as well. Uh, that was huge. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, Trevor May, it's not like, you know, you, got, you just got yourself Mariano Rivera, but I felt Trevor May was a great addition to the bullpen. And I think, you know, people don't realize that Edwin Diaz had a, had a pretty big turnaround last year, uh, you know, from the year before. It was just too short of a season to take notice, and, and, and the Mets weren't, you know, very good in, in those 60 games. But uh, that's, I mean, that to me is still their key, is their bullpen. Uh, that's probably what, you know, their bullpen has killed them for the past two, three years. So, uh, you know, I like them, but, uh, again, look at the Braves, uh, you know, and if the Braves get Soroka back, so, you know, they, they, they managed to get Ozuna back. They got Freeman. They got Albie Swanson, uh, Acuna. They've, they, they got, they, they've got a, they've got a really good team. They're solid. So, uh, the central I, 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 got, I, I tell you what, my sleeper pick in the Central, I know everybody thinks it's the Cardinals because they got Arenado and they re-signed Wainwright and Molina, uh, but I, I, I think their outfield is questionable. And uh, my, my sleeper pick is the Brewers in the Central. Oh, and, yeah. of course, yeah. Uh, one... Yellick, think Yellick is not is not going to hit as poorly as he hit last year. Uh, yeah, I you know I I think I think they're solid enough. They're solid enough. Lorenzo Cain opted out last year. They have him back. They have uh, they signed Jackie Bradley Jr. Uh, they got Colton Wong, who's a solid player, and and you know defense. You improve the defense, you improve your pitching. Uh, yeah, uh, Wood, Woodruff and, and, and Burns. Two, I mean, those, those guys, you know, uh, I, I think, uh, yeah. And, and, uh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, who else they um, – oh, man, I'm forgetting who else they got. And then they got a third starter there, and I have for the – Life of me, I can't remember. Hater, I think, is starting to fade, but they got Devin Williams. That guy's got an unbelievable changeup. It's 
it's like he's got one of those sick change-ups. So, yeah, I, I, then my sleeper team, uh, I don't know, Dodges, Padres, pick them. Uh, you know, a lot will depend on the Padres' bullpen uh, and also the Dodgers. I don't think the Dodgers have a super strong bull. I think that's their weak, their weak link is their bullpen. Yeah, they, so, they blew some games last in the last couple of seasons, right? In the in the postseason with the bullpen. Yeah, well, because you know, uh, you know, they I, it took them too long to realize. You know, they I think they were teased by some decent results during the season from Kenley Jansen, but he's just not the Kenley Jansen that they signed. You know, to that to that huge free agent contract, he's not the same guy. He just isn't. He's a setup guy. He's not. He's not that lockdown closer anymore. Not even close. Uh, so, I like. Uh, oh, the guy. The guy that pitched with Oakland. And I can't believe I'm. I must be getting old. I, I'm telling you, I'm. I must be getting old because, like, I can't remember names like like I used to. It's like crazy. So. Uh, oh, who was the, the the reliever from from? He pitched with Oakland. They signed him last year, a one year, you know, ten million dollar contract, and they re-signed him. Oh God, Wayne! Uh, I, you know, if you want to talk thirty, forty years ago, I can remember everything. Now everything just goes. I know down. that. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, oh man, it's uh, it's it's killing. Oh, Blake Trinan. Okay. Now Blake Trinan, he's solid, but you know what? I think his ball is sometimes a little too straight. I really do. So I I personally I don't I don't see a closer in that bullpen right now, like a shutdown closer. I don't. So I think, you know, while the Dodgers will win a ton of games and go to the postseason and you know, I guess if you're an odds maker, you got to make them, you know, one of the favorites to win the World Series. But uh, I, I like that Padres team. I really do. I liked them last year, and and they only they only added to it. So it's well, it's going to be you interesting. Don't have a closer, I mean, you know, look what the Yankees did with Mariano. That's why they were good every year. <laughs> yeah, and that's and that and and of course that also was big for the for the postseason. So, I, you know what it is, too? I think the Padres, I'll tell you what I like about the Padres. They, I think they have the kind of hitters that can succeed, you know, that can help them succeed, and they can succeed in the postseason. I mean, listen, don't get me wrong. they got their power guys, but they've got hitters on that team that, you know, can hit, you know, can hit the ball, hit the, the you know, the singles, the doubles, guys that can run the bases, uh, you know, and the defense is is pretty decent as well. What so you know, you know one of the you know one of the things I'd like to say when you know when I watch a lot of these Yankees in the minor leagues like Torreya or yeah Gleyber Gle- Torres and Gary Sanchez they were completely different hitters in the minor leagues than they were they are in the major leagues when they get they get bigger and stronger and they get home run happy. And the swing changes and, you know, just everything, it's just they're different hitters. It's true. Uh, well, so Torres was hurt a little bit. Uh, but I'll tell you what, he, his, he, uh, and he knew he was hurt. He actually compensated in a positive way. He drew a lot of walks last year. So his batting eye improved. He, you know, he didn't, he didn't hit the ball well, but his daddy and I improved. He was hurt. And of course he was, you know, he was subpar on, on defense. He was, you know, below average on defense. Let's, let's hope he can turn that around. Gary Sanchez. uh, I, I think the Yankees probably after his third year in the minors, I think if the Yankees would have just said, you know what, we're going to make this guy a first baseman, I I think he would have been fine all these years. You know, just to be to be a catcher, forget about hitting, just on defense alone, just being a catcher alone 
is more difficult than playing any other position and batting combined. Okay, it's there's just so much to it, and uh, and I just think it, you know, it just it overwhelms him. I think it just overloads him, and and I I think that's you know, so I'm um, I'm hoping you know he's looked great in spring training. Let's see what happens when the season starts. He, the tools will you know have always been there. I just I hope that maybe. You know, I hope he's he he grow he grew from all the adversity he went through last year, and and when I say adversity, I don't only mean like you know failure at the plate, but come on, no no player can you know can ignore what's in the media, and you know and they kill them in the media, uh, you know he, we we see it in discussion groups as well. I mean, right away, like, you know, I, it, it actually, it irks me when I see fans uh, assault uh, a player's character or anything yeah, because, and they, yeah, I mean, you know, like, oh, he's a bum, he's a piece of crap and this yeah. and that and, you know, and he's like, like, come on, like, how can you say that? You know, it's, you know. Guy's not up there looking to fail. You know, one of the things, Wayne, even how, you know, how much he struggled last year, we can't forget what it's 150, 160 at bat. You you do his stats over 500 at bats, it's 30 homers and like 85 RBIs. And how many catchers give you that? It's true. And and so here's the other thing. So I was like, uh, you know, a few months ago, I was like curious to say, okay. 60 games. What would 60 games have been? Generally, on a, on a normal major league schedule, game number 60 is usually played around June 5th. Okay, yeah. think about that. <laughs> June 5th, two months and five days. So that leaves almost four more months of the season. I mean, you have like, uh, you know, you have numbers like, you know, that's why you also had like crazy splits last year, okay? I mean, uh, Mookie Betts hit 201 and slugged 221 against lefty pitching last year, okay? What, where would you see that? You know, uh, actually, Giancarlo Stanton, who kills lefties normally, he actually, he hit 174, 333, 435 against lefties. He normally murders them, okay? He actually did better against righties. And I don't, you know, like, I, I, I mean, it just goes, it just, there were just so many more. Uh, but that's, that's what it was like last year. So nobody had a chance to, you know, you didn't have a chance to, uh, to even the stats out, you know, you didn't give them a chance, you know, so they're what they call uh, exfoliated. In other words, so like, or you can't, you can't view them because they are exfoliated, so to speak. Like, in other words, like, you know, they didn't have a chance to run that course. You can't assume that that's what it, what it would have been for the whole season. Yeah, it's 33% so, of the season. That's all, 33%. Yeah. Yeah, so thirty-seven percent. That was it. That's it. Yeah, I mean, all you got to do is look at some, look at some unbelievable he different halves, you know that uh, that players have had over the years. You know, you, you easily you go you look at a certain year, you go to a play, you know, you look at a player stats, and you go to their splits, and and they and and whenever you you know you're looking at splits. They always show before All Star break and after All Star break, and yeah. and many players you could see a huge difference. I remember, uh, so you know I do this thing called Diamond Mind Baseball. It's like sort of like Stratomatic, but it's it's on the computer. It's it's uh, okay. You know, it's Stratomatic. stat replay. Okay, so it's stat replay, and I, I'm going back many years. So. Going back to I think around 2003, 2004 season it might have been, and I had Johan Santana, 
And, like, by the beginning of June, I'm thinking, like, oh, man, I'm going to have to drop this guy at the end of the year. And you know what? He ended up winning the Cy Young, the first of the, his first Cy Young. Okay? So, like I say, you know, it's just the way it is. So, anyway. So, Jack, uh, that's all I got, really. You know? I mean, it's not all I got. I can go on and on and on, but that's all I got. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's good Wayne, to, get, to get a different, you know, to give a different voice every once in a while and some different ideas because it's like, you know, when I talk Yankees, it's it, it's almost – the season, season don't start till October. <laughs> and, and that's the way I, I look at it. You know the team is going to be good. You know they're going to win a lot of games. But then, you know, it's – you know, I hope one of these years these guys step up and get the big hit or win a big game because, you know, that's what separates, that's what makes Yogi a legend and Mantle and DiMaggio and, you know, all these guys, they step up when it counts. And until these guys do have one or two of those moments, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's a whole different story. Well, i tell you, you know, you know what I've noticed, okay? Uh, and I'll tell you why I think uh, – uh, you know, the well, reason they might not be have been as successful in the postseason as they were in years past. We can even go back to the 90s, and we can go back to 77 and 78. They played the game the same way during the season as they played it in the postseason. So, you know, but it, but the way they played during the season – was a successful formula for the postseason. Whereas yeah. we know now that, you know, beating, you know, slug, you know, out slugging the weaker teams and, you know, and splitting with, with, the, with the other plus 500 teams, you know, in Slugfest, that's not going to do it for you in the postseason because it's like you say, that everything is better. You're, you now, and you know, you're not going against, uh, you know. So basically, when in the uh, in the postseason, you're just facing, you know, in in your in your league, you're facing three teams, you know, out, out of fifteen, and they're the top three, uh, and the same thing. And then once you get to the to the World Series, it's the same thing. You're, you're facing a team that that went through the top three teams and was and ended up is the top team. And, uh, you know, you have to, you, you know, the only way you have a chance is if they're built like you, if they, if they manage to slug their way there too. And then you just got to hope yeah. you can out slug them. So, well, well to, be, to be fair, it is a lot harder to win now than it used to be. And because, you, like you say, you have to go through, you have to win more games. You got to win twelve games. Yeah, and, but on uh, the other, uh, on the but on the other hand, you also in the old days you had to be in first place. Yeah, that's there right. Was, yeah. It was okay, but you still, but you had to be. So it's, you know, in a, in a way, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen in the other. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, I, I don't, you know, I don't get it. I mean, it's not only the Yankees. Like a lot of teams, they don't, you know, they it's they're not the only ones that when they get to the postseason. Listen, how how many years is it did it take the Dodgers to win the World Series? So I mean, you know, they're another example. And so uh, I, well, I wonder I mean, when the light bulb's going to go off. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the positive thing. I mean, they're good every year. So you know the Yankees are going to be good. So that's a, you know, they don't have off seasons. I mean, they've won every year since 93. But, uh, you know, it, it, it does get frustrating. But, I mean, it's fr more frustrating for the players, too. So, you know, at least you know the Yankees are always going to be there. Yeah. Hey, listen, look at the Tampa. Look at, talk about Tampa again, right? Tampa, you know, made it to the postseason. And they play in the same kind of ball that they played in the postseason, and then went to the World Series. So, uh, you know, so the thing is, if you've got a team of sluggers and you run into hot pitching, you're done. You're toast. It's 
you know, good pitching will always be good hitting. Yeah, I mean, the Rays have been the same way for like 12, 14 years. Pitching, defense, and they're scrappy hitters. They work the count, and that that's how they've been successful, you know. Yeah. So, well, Jack, it's been a pleasure. It's nice to uh, it's nice to get on. One of these days, I'm going to reboot my podcast, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But right now, I don't know. I guess the uh, I keep saying it, but I just don't get motivated. But and I have I have guests in the waiting. Uh, you know, what can I say? But, hey, listen, I'm sure that you and I will run into each other at some point this baseball season. I'm I'm positive of it. Well, the thing is, Wayne, I'll keep you abreast of what's going on up here. You know, when the minor league, uh, you know, camp opens, which should be in about three weeks, and if they have any exhibition games up this way, I'll, I'll let you know. Oh, yeah, we'll make a run out. And, if, listen, worst comes to worst. We'll uh, we'll snag some tickets for the, for a Rays game. That's all, uh, you know. And and this and listen, there's all, all you know. Listen, there's, there's there will be games in Tampa. There will be games in Clearwater. Uh, you know that. So there's a you well, know Dunedin. Well, Actually, the Jays, and the Jays the Jays might be playing in in uh, Dunedin, yep. right? You, you took the words right out of my mouth. They're playing the Angels there, and they're playing the Yankees there, too. They got, like, four series there. The Yankees come down to Tampa, and then they go over to Needham, I believe. Wow. That's probably going to be a tough ticket because, you know what? You know what's going to, you know what's going to make it so for, for, for like, the, uh, for the marquee matchups, the tickets are going to be real, are going to be even harder because of limited seating. Uh, so that's going to be harder. So, but, uh, yeah, and I was, I was in Clearwater a uh, week before Christmas. So, uh, yeah, I even found a place with really good chicken palm over there. And Clearwater is right next to Dunedin as well because we, yep. we, we went to Dunedin while we were there too. It was 15, Dunedin, 20 beautiful. minutes away. Yep. So, all right, Jack. Well, listen, I know we'll be meeting up soon, so – uh, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Go Yankees, and we'll see you all again soon. You have a good night. Take care, Wayne. Say a little while Go for on, me. Jack. I Bye-bye. will. The proceeding has been a comfortably zoned network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.